Okay, so we're in 3ds Max. I have a scene set up with a physical camera, and we're going to take a look at Arnold Physical Sky and the Sky Dome. So, I just have a few torus knots set up in the scene. I've already set up my renderer for Arnold in both the active shade as well as the production renderer. And we're going to um, set up the physical sky. So I'm going to go under the Create menu. We're going to go into Lights, make sure we're under Arnold, and go to Arnold Lights. For our light type, we're going to go into Shape, Sky Dome, and then we're going to draw out a light. So I'm just going to move this up so we can see it where my ground plane is. And make sure it's selected. Go to the modifier. And what we're going to do is we're going to use a texture for the physical sky. So to create the texture, I'm going to go into my material editor. I'm going to right click, go to maps, Arnold, environment, physical sky. With this physical sky selected, I'm going to drag it over into the texture, no map section, and make sure it says instance. That way any changes we make here will update onto the light. Now that we have that set, I'm just going to double click so we have our controls and scoot this over a bit. And then we're going to do a quick render and take a look at it. So I've changed some settings here. Um, and just to show you, by default, the intensity is 1 and your exposure is 8. So it's really blown out. So I have brought this down to an intensity of excuse me, exposure of 4, and intensity of 0.02-ish. And this looks much better. So with this physical sky, it gives you a sky environment. Um, if I hide my plane, it also gives you sort of a black ground plane. And this is going to affect how the light refracts into the environment with certain situations. So just to show you what it looks like. So with our settings we have the azimuth and elevation setting and what this is is it allows us to use the azimuth which is going to be the rotation of where the Sun is and then the elevation which is going to be the height of the Sun. So I'm just going to navigate this so we can actually see the Sun in the scene. So if I put this to 90 degrees and we take a look, we'll notice that the shadows are directly under us because the sun is above us. We can't see the sun, so let's drag this down a bit. And by dragging it down, I start getting longer shadows and I can figure out where that sun is. And I'm going to just rotate until we see the sun in the scene. So let's say about here and pull it down so it comes into play, just so we can see it. Uh, let me just pull it up a little bit so we get a slightly brighter scene. And now we have our sun visible in the background and we have our shadows being cast off of that sun. So if I don't want to use this setting, I can turn this off and then I can set the sun's direction with these controls. Um, yeah, whichever one's preferred by you. Now that I can see the sun, I don't want to move it again. So sun enabled is whether or not you see the little sphere in the sky, which is the sun. And then sun size. This by default is the actual sun size in the sky when the sun is up high. Um, as you get lower, closer to the horizon, you do get a distortion and it does appear to be larger in the sky. So as you adjust this, it does affect the shadows. So when I make this really large, the shadows become more diffuse. When I go back to the 0.51, now you'll see how the shadows are much tighter. So you can make adjustments to this Again, just be aware of the effect on the shadows. Here we have our sun tint. So I can come in here and create a color. And it tints the sun. So you'll see 
on your specular hits as well as on the reflection on the surface I have. Uh, we'll just pull that back to white right now. And then we have a sky tint. So I can do the same sort of thing and just start to tint the sky color. And we'll pull that back. Our next selection down here is your ground albedo. And what this does is it affects how much um, the light's going to bounce off and then reflect back into the environment. We have our intensity, and just like we were using our um, Arnold Light intensity and exposure, we can come in here and start making adjustments with our intensity. We have that additional intensity control. So here we have our turbidity setting, and what this really does is it affects the atmosphere. So when you have your turbidity and we increase it, it's going to put more particles into the air or more of a haze into the air. Um, and let's see if that's clear. We have the haziness. this guy. So I'll bring that back down. Three. And here is just a changing, adjusting your XYZ coordinates. So if you need to make adjustments to the location of the objects in the scene. We can go and make adjustments to our sky. If we had some weirdness, we can angle. So if you find that your scene isn't lining correctly, you can go in and adjust it here. And then in terms of other controls, um, once we go to render, we have to go into, I'm going to go into my projection render. And then we can go into our Arnold render we're going to go down to environment and if you find that you have a bit of noise with your environment you can adjust your samples here so this is where you're going to find to um, remove some of the noise in your samples okay so that's the basics of your physical sky